Hi everybody and welcome to Heel Heat, our WWE show for the week. My name is George Coles, this is my tag team partner, Evan Bourne. Thanks, Baron Von Raschke. I'm Gary Rhodes. And uh, th this is going to be our WWE theme. First of all, we want to talk a little bit of what happened on, S on SmackDown. Um, I thought it was a really good match between Sandow and Sheamus. Uh, they're bringing the kid up, you know, putting him against some good talent, trying him out. Uh, he's one of the guys that I think is going to be the future of the business, and it's good to see him, you know, even if it wasn't really much, but to see him in there with top talent was good. Well, if all the new guys have just been really, or, you know, set for the main show this year, he's the best talker by far. Right. right. And I, I liked it. It was pretty cool. Um, then you had, the thing I really liked about SmackDown is it seems to be that, that they're going to focus on the tag team division over there. You got the guys like um, Darren... Right. Primetime players. The primetime players, the Usos, Gabriel and Kidd, and um, what's the other one? Uh, the uh, R-Truth and, yeah, the clones, and R-Truth and, and Kofi. All are on the show. All have, it seems to have a nice few going on there. Um, I like the idea of them using that show to build the tag division. Gives it something different than Raw. Well, the tag division right now, I, I still like the Usos the best. I think they're the best, but it doesn't seem like they want to push them to be the best. I like their gimmick the best. I like their entrance. They they work well together. I don't know why they're not getting pushed better, to be honest with you. I don't know why they haven't had a tag team title run by well, now. Well, they're better than the, the primetime players. When the primetime players were going through all this big old push they've been getting. And uh, really, I mean, there's the better team. They have better team continuity. They just get along better. And, I mean, they're brothers. You know, the brother teams... For the most part, usually nine times out of ten work. I mean, you look at the Steiners, the Briscoes, the Booker T, Stevie Ray, you know. Legitimate brother teams. Well, yeah, exactly. Not brothers. Not the Dudley boys. They're brothers. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. That's what you want to say. Haven't you heard the story about... Oh, I don't want to hear about Mama Faye and, and Levon. About Father Eddie Dudley. Christian brought them in. Anyway, they were brother teams. And hopefully they come back to help out the division, too. Oh, yeah. Well, we've seen the shirt. Yeah. Devon wearing a Rawls War shirt, a subtle hint, maybe. Maybe it was just all he had clean. No, you know? it's a hint. It's a straight-up hint. But then you got another thing that's, that's been going on with Smack, mostly on SmackDown, is uh, the Cody Rhodes' obsession with taking the mask. Uh, now, this time he tried to take it off of Ray instead of Sin Cara, which ended up bringing Sin Cara out to put... Another Sin Cara mask on Cody, which is the only time Sin Cara will ever be good is with Cody wearing the mask. Yeah. Well, that's that's a good point. I think they need to get Cody away from Sin Cara, get him away from Ray, yeah. and start giving him a better push. I mean, he's a solid wrestler. Yeah. And he's great on a mic, and he's just entertaining to watch. Right. And, and you know, I liked it. It it led to the tag team, and they also had the tag team match on Raw. But we'll get to that part later. Another thing was uh, another good match I thought on SmackDown was Ziggler versus Orton. Solid match. Really solid. Ziggler seems to work well with Orton's pacing in the ring. Uh, something last week we talked about um, Del Rio and Orton not working well together because they have a similar pace. Mm -hmm. But Ziggler seemed to play well off of it. I'm 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 I don't know why they're waiting to put him in the main event. Well, the thing is with. Well, why they didn't work out, you got two guys that just worked at, like you said, that slow, methodical pace, and it makes for a boring match. You need a guy like Ziggler, moves around, good speed, you know. And I mean, kind he's, of he's not the, the fastest pace. guy in the world. No, but he speeds the, the pace of the matchup, and that's, he's like a, a Shawn Michaels, a Mr. Perfect, you know, he's more in you where, put that in there, of course, you? where Orton's more like a Bret Hart, slow, build. You know, the best guy that ever did that, and he was never a real top, top guy, was Greg the Hammer Valentine. Right, exactly. And then you got, they, they were, uh, Orton won on SmackDown, and then Ziggler cheated to win on Raw. Hopefully they have a third payoff match at some time. I would say at the pay-per-view, but it's going to be Night of Champions. So It'll probably happen there, because Vince never be, sticks to the... It could be on the pregame show, too, on the, the, the Sunday Night Heat. Well, not Heat no more. The YouTube show. The YouTube show. Anyway, and that, that brings me, I want to get to our uh, question of the week here. Um, the question for last week was, what failed gimmick do you think could work now if it was brought back? Uh, we do got a couple answers. Um, first is from our friend, the Masked Tweeter. Um, 
he put, not sure this is considered a gimmick, but I wish they would bring back managers like the Brain and Albano. Not so many things you could, I'm sorry, just so many things you could do with them. Kind of starting to see it a little bit with Heyman and Brock. Imagine Heyman with Punk. Hmm. Wow, what a tweeter might be Kreskin. I'm telling you. But I, I like the idea. I'm, I was upset when they fired Abraham Washington. I thought he was a decent manager. I like Heyman as a manager. Of course. Um, any, any of these guys, you know, I think that some of these guys could be repackaged as managers and aren't necessarily working as wrestlers. You know, a guy like um, Matt Stryker. I thought he was a good manager when he had a Big Daddy V. Oh, he was. And I think maybe uh, Zack Ryder. You know, he's not getting a real good push right now. You know, bring him out there with some bigger guys. You know, kind of... He'd be good with the prime time players. Yeah, it would work. And then uh, also our friend Paul over at From the Deadly Sins, he, he gave us, as gay as this is going to sound, I think that the best fail gimmick that could make a comeback now with the PG rating and the kids watching would be three count. However, the front man has to be able to sing and the other two have to be able to dance. I really like that idea. I was a fan of Three Count personally. I like Evan, or uh, no, was it, it Shannon you, Moore? Is it because you look like Tank Evan? Yeah, it's because I look like Tank Evan. I like uh, Shannon uh, Moore. Uh, I liked um, Evan Courageous, and I liked uh, who was the third guy? It was um, Shannon Moore. I said Shannon. Oh, I said Shane. Gregory Shane Helms. Gregory Helms. Gregory Shane Helms. Helms. Yeah, I liked him. I liked him. I thought they were good workers. I agree with you. They couldn't sing worth a shit, but I thought that was part of the gimmick. Yeah, of course. But it, I, it was a great idea. I think it, would, it could work now it, with guys like One Direction, you know, being hot right now, band, little shit bands like that. Yeah. That people like us could give a fuck about, but all the little kids seem to love. Yeah. Who do you think would be a good fail gimmick that they could bring back? Uh, I, I like Skinner. I mean, if you don't really remember Skinner, you know, look him up on YouTube. He had an awesome match with Bret Hart back in... Uh, I would say, was it 94, 93? Somewhere around there. In that area. Which, actually, Skinner was Steve Kern, who by that time was at the twilight of his career, but he was a tremendous worker. Well, a character like that, someone that could work like him, you know, Steve Kern was awesome. He was one of the doinks, too. Yeah, everybody played doink at one point. Well, if you really look at it, whenever they did doink, it had to have somebody that had some trust in to play that character. Yeah, someone that could work a decent I mean, uh, was it Matt Bourne? was yeah. the first, and uh, I mean, that's another character, but he was way over, but I mean, they could have kept him in a title run, too, as Doink, too. But. And that form is Heel Doink? Heel Doink was awesome. Yeah. But uh, my, my guess, my, my bet's on Skinner. I think that character right now, if they would have brought it out, repackaged him, just as that character, someone repackaged someone as that character, I think it would go over well. I like that idea. Who was yours? Um, to be honest, this is a really hard one for me, because... A lot of the failed gimmicks, I think, are failed for a good reason. Mantar, huh? <laughs> um, one, one I would like to kind of see back is um, some, something like the Patriot. I kind of liked, I kind of liked that gimmick where you know was a, he was a masked wrestler defending the United States. I thought the Patriot was a ten times better worker than Hacksaw Jim Duggan with a similar gimmick. And I, I loved the matches he had with um, Bret, Hart. Bret Hart, and I loved what he did in USWA in, uh, in Memphis, too. Yeah. He was good in WCW also, with yeah. him and... Uh, well, I, by, far, by far his best matches were in USWA, though. Yeah. Which I, li- I liked it. Uh, I thought Del Wilkes was a good guy, a good wrestler. I think something like that coming back, um, over the top, overly American, I think it could work well. Kind of like Mr. America, almost. Yeah, but not Hulk Hogan. But not Hogan. And now that brings us to the question of the week for this week. Our question of the week is, what do you think has been the best faction of wrestling? Whether it be the Nation of Domination, the Generation X, the Triple Threat, the Four Horsemen. Dangerous Alliance. There's tons of them out there. Um, Evolution. Let us know what you think. Hit us up on Twitter. Put it down. In, put it down on Facebook. Let us know. Put it in the comments under this video down there. Down there. Oh, I fucked that one up. I sent card it. <laughs> That's not fair to Flair that I did that. It's not fair at all. But anyway, <laughs> apologize to going number five. Exactly. But we're going to talk about. You know, we got. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the Raw show. We had uh, Punk and Sheamus in the opener. Punk was tremendously over with the. 
the raw the uh, Chicago crowd. Enough, everything he said was going over like crazy. Yeah, I wouldn't have put the whole thing with him interrupting Sheamus. They were trying yeah. to build Sheamus up, and it kind know. of buried Sheamus. Oh, he was did. getting booed like crazy, and he was a face in the situation. Yeah, since you're talking out your arse, why don't you turn around so I can talk to him? Yeah. I mean, it's like, is that the best you got? I did like the pecking order. Yes, the pecking order is, here's, down there. All right, that was pretty good. Which set up, AJ came out and set up the two hot main event matches the night, which Punk came out later in the Sheamus match and said, I'm not wrestling, I'm going home. Oh, I remember right before that match started, you're like, man, they're putting this match on now. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad it ended up the way it was because I was kind of pissed off that the two world champions would hot would um, start the 9 o'clock hour instead of being the main event on Raw. It doesn't make fucking sense. But it's set up for one of the greatest moments in Raw history. We'll catch up that. We'll yeah. get up to that later. And then um, the the be- one of the highlights, I think, of the night in the past two weeks have been the Kane and Daniel Bryan anger management segments. Oh, my gosh. They were by far the best. Everything from the anger collages with Kane doing the pyro thing, the, uh, the Pratt Falls, the... Uh, Catch me on falling. Oh yeah. And then Harold, aka Scorpio Sky, he he's been really good in these. I think he's someone that they should put under contract. Maybe send down to FCW. Uh, give him give him six months a year. See what he could do. If he can't impress, I mean, if he doesn't impress you, what's it going to hurt? I mean, you got guys in FCW that are never going to get called up. Exactly. So why not give Scorpio Sky Harold? I mean, he's been a good indie worker for a pretty good amount of time now. Uh, check him out. Look him up. Scorpio Sky. He was just in um in the TNA X Division thing, the X Division whatever tournament mm-hmm. as um what was it Mason Andrews something like that. It, I believe something right. like that. I mean he's a good worker. He really is, and I liked he worked well with Kane and Brian. I thought that was good. He'd and be I, a good per- third person to bring in for that that uh yeah that program they're running. And then uh, I, it led to the um. The fans voting on what they wanted to see, which they wanted to see him hug, him, hug it out. Oh, the which, hug it out was great. On paper, that should have been shit. Oh, I mean, if it was anybody else at that point, they would have booed out of the arena. I mean, period. I mean, if, if it was like, or not Hogan, but uh, Cena and Orton doing a hugging it out, it would have been worthless. It would have went over like a lead balloon. But with them two doing it, it was perfect. Yeah. You know? I think they play well together. I'd personally like to see... If they're not going to be in the world title pitch or either of them, I'd like to see them go have a little run as a tag team. Well, what I see could happen is if they're going to have their rematch match or whatever like that, I think they're not going to have that. I think they're going to put them in a tag team match against the, you know, they're going to say, AJ's probably going to say, you know what, you're going to face tag team champions. You mm-hmm. know, figure they're going to screw each other over and, and fight and they'll end up winning the belt. And I think they could have a long run. Yeah. Put some belts on them. Can't, it wouldn't hurt Kane to put some gold on them. No, I mean, the guy deserves it. He's a he's a surefire Hall of Famer. I think, personally, he's one of the better big guys that's ever been in the business. I'm a big fan of his, personally. Yeah, he's a great, and he's a you know, real good guy, personally, too. And I, I love Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan's my favorite wrestler right now, at the time. More than Punk right now. More than Punk. I like Daniel Bryan. I mean, everything... The, the kid, ever since about this time last year, he's been firing on all cylinders. Well, the thing is, you look at where they were at. Look at who was wrestling that night, well, supposedly wrestling that night, and he got a bigger pop than Punk. Yeah. In Chicago. Yep. And it was... That's like getting a bigger pop than Hogan in Madison Square Garden. I mean, he's getting to the point where it's like Steve Austin, where everything the guy says, he's getting a t-shirt made out of. And, and it works. And, they're, and they're it's working. People are buying it. There's, there's tons of no shirts in the crowds. There's tons of yes shirts in the crowd. He gets the yes-no reaction, kind of like the Kurt Angle, you suck reaction. I mean, it's it's tremendous. He's a great, great worker. I think it is awesome to see Brian Danielson be at this level where, you know, longtime fans like me always thought, what could he do in the WWE? Now he's there and he's proven that he's, if he's not the best in the world, he's t- top two or three. Well, what I think is going to happen, which, you know, this is just a prediction, is, I mean, Punk laid the groundwork out. He's kind of like the Shawn Michaels. He laid the... Yeah. the, the for the Attitude Era. He laid the groundwork out for Stone Cold. I think Punk has laid the groundwork out for Brian. If everything plays out right, uh, I, I see it happening within a couple of years. And then another thing I really liked on Raw, um, you had the Jerry, Jerry Lawler, CM Punk backstage segment, 
depending on if you listen to Michael Cole or CM Punk, depends on who attacked first. They didn't really show it, so who knows what, what they're going with on that. But it led to a fresh face on commentary, Miz, who I thought did really good for it being his first time out there doing it. I mean, he's done guest spots, but to carry a whole show like that, that's a lot harder than it looks. People think that just anybody could do it. I mean, I thought he did really well. I mean, there were some points, yeah, it was boring. The show was boring a lot, though. Yeah, I mean, except for, like, the anger management thing and Punk coming out. The wasted 20 minutes with AJ and... Let's not even talk about that. Oh, my God, that was horrible. AJ and Vicky wasted 20 minutes of my life that I'll never get back. It's not fair to me. It's not fair to Gary. It's not fair to Lou. And it's definitely not fair to Flair. Exactly. I mean, it was horrible. I, it was probably the worst thing ever... Paul said it best. Me and Paul were talking on Twitter. Paul from the Deadly Sins. Uh, the the experiment's over. I under, We all understand that you gave Vicky a job as a favor to Eddie, but we don't want her on TV anymore. No. Put her in a backstage role if you want to give her a job. You want to keep her on payroll. Well, speaking fair to Flair, well, I, I think honestly, <laughs> what's going to happen is as soon as Flair's cleared to wrestle with Vince or cleared to, clear to work with the company. She's out the door. He's with Ziggler. That's the plans they've been wanting. It's just a matter of this lawsuit going on. Yeah. And then we have um, another thing. I thought was a. I was gonna. I was ready to shit on it, but it ended up being better than I thought. Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara, two guys we hate on this show, as you guys know, versus Cody Rhodes and Tensai. Tensai. He is what he is. He wasn't the highlight. I actually liked Sin Cara and Rey Mysterio as a tag team. I liked it. But I wouldn't. I didn't want to see Rhodes in there again. Like I said earlier, I think they're burying Rhodes with these guys. You know, why put him with guys he's better than? Now he's legitimately better than Mysterio. He's better than uh, Sin Cara. He he's a solid worker. He needs to be out of this program. Put him with somebody else. I'd rather see him work with Zack Ryder because at least then he'll get over. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Sin Cara, this Pat O'Connor, Sin Cara, Boss of the Week goes to Kate. Holy fuck, you got it right. It's perfect. No. Yeah. You didn't throw the pencil off. I didn't have it with me. But anyway, he got it right. Caitlin, if you've seen the match, she had, what was it she was going for? A leapfrog, and she ended up kneeing. Who was she wrestling? Even that, yeah. knee, even that got the Divas division so terrible that I, don't, I can't even remember the matches. That she just got the botch of the week, everybody. I can't remember what all happened because it was, it was worthless and it was, so, you know, there was really no other botches, so she inherited it. And then we had the uh, the John Cena versus Alberto Del Rio was the main event of the night. A Falls Count Anywhere match. A really solidly worked match. Well, speaking of uh, Alberto Del Rio, when Sheamus kicked uh, Ricardo Rodriguez in the head, he came out by himself. Okay. And I think it worked. His character seemed a lot more angry and ready to fight. I liked when they put a, a, a sidebar on it that they put Otunga with him talking about possible lawsuits. I like that. I mean, we'll, if, we'll find something out Friday night. That's what the the tag is that they're going to talk about on Friday. But I like that. I liked it works with Otunga's character. It works with Alberto Del Rio's character. It fits both of them. Well, Cena works, speaking of Cena in this match, Cena works good with guys like Miz, guys like Alberto Del Rio, guys like Punk, well, and yeah. guys like Orton because he kind of fears his spot when he's working against these, these four gentlemen. Well, he also works good in Falls Count Anywhere matches. Exactly, that's why they put this out. Where the, the rules are a little bit relaxed. He hits more than just his uh, his six-hit combo of queer. He has other moves he can involve in it. You go, He uses the weapons. Although he didn't hit all six moves. I'm sorry, Lou. He hit five of the six. But still, he uses other... You know, he's able to bring other stuff into the match. Well, when they first announced the match, I was like, man, this is going to be boring. And this, you know, It was actually a solid match. He did let uh, Alberto Del Rio hit some good moves on him. Yeah. That uh, it's a Gary. He hit him with out oh, ringside. Oh, that was beautiful. sweet. Other than other than uh, Owen Hart, I think Alberto throws one of the best Insiguris ever, and that's even including Antonio Inoki, who invented it. Yeah. But you know, I, I really like the match. Then they go into the back. They wrestle into the backstage, being a false count anywhere, and CM Punk shows up and screws John Cena, which was tremendous. Oh, it was great. That was, he, you know, he puts Alberto on top of Cena, then he hits the go to sleep instead of kneeing him, he hits him off the bumper of his car, which is being driven by... 
Paul Heyman. It is noted that Paul Heyman is signed back with WWE to be with Punk to help keep Brock Lesnar fresh in our minds for the rematch for him and uh, Triple H. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. Anytime Paul Heyman could be on TV is is a plus. Exactly, and he's going to help get Punk to be the bigger, uh, bigger. Yeah, he's going to he's going to make the Punk Punk heel turn better than what it is now because it's really not going over well because the fans still want to cheer him. <laughs> But the fans love to boo Paul. The little thing is, it's kind of like when they turned Austin heel back yeah. in 02 and got him with McMahon. The only way they could turn him heel was with McMahon. The only way they could turn him heel is with, is Paul, with, Heyman. with Paul Heyman. And I, like, I, right. I forget, I, I, I'm I sorry, I'm not attributing it to this anybody, but someone put on Twitter, and I can't, I cannot remember for the life of me who it was, that the WWE hates Paul Heyman, but he's so good that they have to keep bringing him back. Oh, well, he's awesome. I mean, he's, he is a tremendous... Would you, say, would you say Paul Heyman gets heel of the week just for driving the car? I wasn't going to go see him punk, but you know what? I see the look on your face like a kid at Christmas. <laughs> this will be the second time Paul Heyman's been heel of the week. I was, I was going for for uh, punk, but you know, I'll give it to you. Because the, the look on his face was just priceless. And you look, and this, this tubby bitch is like, is it Christmas, Gary? <laughs> it's like he opened up a gift and found the Red Rider BB gun. You're, you're going to shoot your eye out. I'm a Paul Heyman guy. What can I say? It was awesome. Though. Brock Lesnar's a Paul Heyman guy. And so he walked Paul. out of here, too. It, like you said, though, no, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this in there. It would have been better if Colt Cabana was in the back seat. Yeah. I, w- I would have liked Colt Cabana riding shotgun or something. Or Devon. Since I think he has uh, the no compete. No compete for a couple months or whatever. Anyway, that's, uh, that's pretty much all we have for this week um, on our Heel Heat Show, the Raw Show of the Week. My name's George Coles. I'm Gary Rhodes. And we'll see you guys next time.